Well, if you have your Bibles, and we always encourage you to have your Bibles, uh, turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And the title of tonight's message, and again, I want to say welcome if it's your first time here. Welcome to Calvary. We're so blessed you're here. The title of today's message is, Are We With God? We know that Emmanuel means God with us, but the question I want us to look at tonight or ask is, are we with God? I don't know if you've noticed, but it gets a little crazy this time of year. Has anyone noticed that? Anybody noticed that a little bit? <laughs> right? Craziness. I tell you, I uh, wouldn't even think about going to the mall because, you know, you get mauled at the mall. But, I mean, it's crazy. But most of us have felt the craziness of this holiday preparations. Your calendar's probably been filled with all kinds of holiday activities, with parties. Perhaps you feel at times like a drowning person. You're just trying to keep your head above the water at this hectic pace of the season. I want to tell you, especially I feel like you know, church is kind of a, a, a wild time, a hectic time. A lot of people get discouraged. A lot of things go on. But uh, we have to remember the reason for the season. Amen? amen? It's Jesus. Amen? Unfortunately, with all the commercial hype and hoopla, it can distract us from the real reason for the season. So as we've been running from holiday house cleaning to kids' recitals, to intense shopping sprees, to fighting the traffic, it's easy to forget the reason for the season, and that's the baby that was born in a manger. That is the real season or reason for the season, amen? Yes. That's the reason. And now it's not just the busyness of the season that can help us forget Jesus this time of year, but now it's things like the ACLU, groups like the separation of church and state that are trying to take every symbol of Jesus Christ away from our public square. How many like me are getting a little frustrated with that? Amen? I tell you, I like it that uh, it seems like I'm praying that the church will kind of arise. You know, the sleeping giant will arise and start speaking. I've said many times that they're saying the liberals are speaking up, the homosexuals are speaking up, but how many know it's time for the church to lovingly speak up. Amen? Can I hear an amen out there? Because I love it. You know, I mean, I don't agree with everything that Donald Trump does, and I don't agree with his hair comb over. You know, I'm just kidding. But uh, I think it's neat that if you remember, Starbucks took the wreath off and took anything of Christmas off their cups. Now they just have a red cup. But I thought it was pretty neat that even Donald Trump, who I don't think is the most godly person on the planet, but Donald Trump said what? He said, you know, they're one of my biggest uh, renters in uh, Trump Towers, but he says the fact that they're taking Christ out of Christmas, he says, I think you should boycott uh, Starbucks. And he says, this is going to cost me millions of dollars, probably, but he says, I don't care. I mean, that's what I think America's liking, yeah. is that people saying enough is enough. Enough. You know, you know I, I said this Sunday, and I'll say it again, and people will probably hate me for this, but you know, I'm just going to say it anyway, but is that if you don't like the Christ of Christmas, then you don't get a Christmas vacation. <laughs> Amen? How many of you, I love Jesus. You know, I mean, you would say that, right? But we see that, is that, that they're trying to take him out of the public square. They're trying to take the, every manger scene away. I heard, I don't know if you saw on the news, the zombie manger scene, manger scene. That's pretty sad that someone would have that much brazenness to make a zombie manger scene. How many know, I would not like to be that guy standing before God if I don't know Christ. Because it's just, it's a mockery, and it's so sad. They're trying to take away every remembrance of the reason for the season, that's Jesus. Everything that reminds people of the birth of Christ. To the point, if you even say, Merry Christmas, you feel like you could be arrested. Amen? How many know this? I always love to do this because I'm just a real humble, shy guy. But I'll say, Merry Christmas, people will say, Happy Holidays. And I said it to this movie lady, this lady at the movie theater, the person who takes your ticket, and she, I said, ha Merry Christmas. She said, Happy Holidays. And she said it kind of abrupt. And so I said, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and she said, she went, okay, Merry Christmas to you too. I mean, no, we need to do that, I think. We need to sort of say, hey, you know, this, is, you know, this isn't Happy Holiday. This is Merry Christmas. You know what Christmas means? Christ Mass, the remembrance of Christ. And we need to say that. It's crazy that when a salesperson says Merry Christmas now, you kind of have to take a double take. You go, 
Oh my goodness, you said Merry Christmas. I want to tell you, we should encourage people when they say Merry Christmas. I do. I say, man, that is so great. I am so glad you said Merry Christmas. We need to tell people that. And, and I think stores are kind of coming around. You notice that? I think Walmart said, no, Happy Holidays. But then I think they're going back. I think they're allowing people to say what they want to say. I'm not sure about that, but I think they are. Have you noticed that? A little turnaround? I've noticed it. And we should push for that. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, it's not happy golden days, all right? It's, it's, this is about Jesus. Have you also noticed that, uh, that you know, it's kind of like the way I see it is not saying Merry Christmas this time of year. It's kind of like saying having a Craig Day or Craigmas Day. And I'm not, you know, you have this big party, big birthday party for me, but I'm not invited. How many you know that's how nuts the world has gotten? It's like we, we love Christmas, we love gift giving, which is a picture of what? The greatest gift of all, God giving his only son. But a lot of times we don't want to remember the reason for the season. And I want to tell you enough of that. It's time for us, the church, to remember the reason for the season and to lovingly, not obnoxiously, but lovingly and boldly proclaiming the reason for the season, Jesus Christ. Amen? Before I get you all worked up, let's pray and ask God to bless the rest of his message. Lord, we thank you. I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for the family members who have arrived safely. And I just pray you'll bless. Sometimes Christmas can be a stressful time, as we said. Sometimes it can bring out sometimes the worst in us, getting families together. But I pray you'll bless every family here. And I ask that right now you would speak to us, Lord, through your word. That you would touch us and you would draw every one of us, Lord, wherever we're at. If we're close to you, that you would even encourage us to get closer to you. If we're far away, that you would draw us close. If we've been maybe allowing sin in our life and be playing one foot in the world and one foot in the church, Lord, draw us back. I pray that we would all tonight sense your love, sense your heart of giving, that for God, you, Father, so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son to die in our place. That's why you were born, Jesus, to die for our sins. So, Lord, let us be so thankful for that. Let us make sure we always lift our hands and lift our hearts in praise to say, thank you, Father, that you sent your Son to die for me. Let us rejoice that we know the meaning. Most of us here know the meaning of Christmas. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So what's the answer to this hectic time of year? God's answer to the craziness of this season is that it's supposed to be so special. It's supposed to be a season that's so peaceful and joyful. So what is God's answer to all the craziness that's out there? Well, I believe it's found in Matthew, as I said, Matthew 21, or Matthew 1, verse 21. And it said, talking about Mary, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people, hear this, not just save them, to salvation, but he'll save them from their sins. Does anyone have any sin out there? Anyone want to admit it? I think, right, if you don't, you're a liar, the Bible says, so we all have sin, right? So now you have the sin of lying. There you go. But so we all have sin. We need to know that the the holy God of heaven, he can't know our craziness. He can't relate to our hecticness of us as sinful people because he can't, as I said, know sin. It's not just, it's not his nature that, to, to, to know it because everything he is is about peace and joy. It's not a part of him. It's, hecticness and crazes is just the opposite of who Jesus is. So God had a great dilemma because he can't know sin. He can't relate to our craziness, the busyness and craziness. Isn't that amazing that Jesus, do you think Jesus was a little busy? But notice Jesus was never in a hurry. You never see Jesus losing it. Hey, I'm going to the cross here. You never see that. And you see him on the cross praying for people, right? Praying praying for the thief on the cross. You see him saying to John, John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. And you see Jesus caring, even though he has the weight of all the sin in the world. He's caring about it. He's always at peace. Amen? He's always at peace, and so he can't relate. I mean, he, he feels our passion, but he can't relate to the craziness. I mean, even when his good friend Lazarus was dying, he waited three days to go. He's never in a hurry. How, how many like to live like that? I would, wouldn't you? Just never stressed out, always peaceful, because you know that God is in control. And how many know, 
I'll tell you, I heard some news today that was tempting me to just feel like, God, what's going on? But I want to know you that, let you know that God is in control. How many know that? And that everything that comes our way, God is in control. And you have to either believe that or you're going to spin out of control. And I choose to believe that God is in control. Amen? So God, as I said, had a great dilemma because he can't relate to our stressed outness or our craziness. So he, how could this stable, sane God who loves humanity, how could he, this holy God know and relate to us crazy humans? Well, God the Father, as I said, sent his only son to become a human being so that the true celebration of Christmas is the celebration, hear this, and hear this only, of the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen? It's more than gift giving. It's more than giving the perfect gift. And you know the pressure when someone gives you a really good gift? You go, oh, I didn't think that. Oh, I got to get a better gift. You know? I mean, no, that, it's not about that. Who can outdo who? It's about the birth of Jesus Christ. That baby who was 100% God Almighty, yet he was also 100% man, so that he could relate to us. He couldn't relate to our sin, but he can relate to the stress of life. He can relate to the pressures of life. He can relate to the pain of the temptations of sin. He was truly God Almighty come in the flesh. The baby who came to show us the Father. The baby who came to show us how also we can walk with the Father. And most of all, this baby who came, as I said, to die in our place, to take all our sin and guilt and craziness away. How many are thankful for that? Amen. The guilt, I don't know about you, but I've done a lot of things that I have been ashamed of, and I thank God that he says, he doesn't just forgive us our sins, but he says his blood cleanses us from an evil, guilty conscience. How many are thankful for that? Amen. The conscience that can be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Isaiah 53, 4 says this, yet it was our weakness he carried. Talking about Jesus. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. Verse 5, he was wounded and crushed for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped and we were healed. He came, as I said, in the form of a little baby to take away all the craziness that is in our lives because of the sin of humanity and our sins. So as I said, God is with us through Jesus Christ. But here's the question I want us, if you leave remembering anything, remember this. God is with us, but are we with God? Are we with God? How many knows the Bible says no one comes to Father unless the Father draws him? But how many know that we have to open our heart to that drawing? He will not, I love, you ever see the picture of Jesus opening, you know, knocking on the door? And if you look at that door, if you've seen that picture, it's a bedtime story picture. If you see it, there's never a handle on the door because why? Only you can open the door of your heart. I disagree with the theologian that said, you know, God dragged me into the kingdom kicking and screaming. How many know God did not drag me? Did he drag you? He, he drew me. He overwhelmed me with his love, but I had to receive him. How many could say amen to that? Amen. I had to open my heart to him. He came, as I said, so Matthew 1.22 now says this. Matthew chapter 1, verse 22. It says, all this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Verse 23, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. And most of you know Emmanuel means what? God is with us. God with us. As I said again, I want to say this. My question is for you and I this night is, we know that God is with us, but are we, are we given to him or are we with him? You know, a lot of people come to church on Christmas and on Easter, but I want to encourage you. I mean, God wants a little more than that from you. He wants you to live for God all the time. He wants you, as he gave his all for you, he wants you to give your all to him. So I want to ask you, do you take full advantage of all the privileges and benefits that we have in Christ now that we know that God is with us? Now some of you might be saying, well, Pastor Craig, what are all these privileges that are in Christ? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's see what the Bible says. Isaiah 9, 6. You don't have to turn there, but just write it down if you're a note taker. 
Isaiah 9, 6, talking about Christ, a prophecy of Christ from Isaiah. He says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Don't you love that? So when someone says, well, how do you know Jesus is God? It was prophesied 700, 2,700 years ago that he will be called Mighty God. Not a God, as the Mormons say, but he is Mighty God. Everlasting Father. He's even equal to the Father. Prince of Peace. I tonight want to look at just two of the benefits or privileges that we have if we've received Christ in our hearts. This Emmanuel in our lives. If we walk with him, if we know him, these are the privilege we have. Let's look at some of the attributes or privileges of Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Here it says, the government will be upon his shoulders. I'm told that there's a statue right outside of Rockefeller Center in New York. Maybe you've seen it. That has Atlas. Have you ever seen it? Has anyone seen that? It has Atlas holding the whole world on his shoulders. Atlas, his name means one who bears or carries a heavy burden. Does this describe you this Christmas season? Are you carrying a heavy burden? Do you feel the weight and pressure of the whole world on your shoulders? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel lonely? Well, I'm also told that right across the street from Rockefeller Center is St. Patrick's Cathedral. I went there as a little kid, but I don't remember it. And they have a statue there of Jesus, as a young Jesus, and he's holding the whole world in his palm of his hand. How many like that? Atlas has got the whole world crushing him. Jesus, a little kid, a little boy, is holding the world in his hand. That's why we have the song, he's got the whole world, right? Holding the whole world in his hand. Now, if Jesus can handle the weight of the whole world in his hand, the weight of the world's governments on his shoulders, I'm pretty sure he can handle the weight and stress of your life. Amen? But we have to give it to him. Here, here's what it says. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this. Give, it's my, one of my favorite verses. 1 Peter 5, 7. If you don't have this marked in your Bible, you should mark it. You should have it. You should memorize it because this is a verse that all of us need to live in these trying times. Amen. How many know the Bible says it's only going to get better? And I mean that in a cynical way. It's only going to get more stressful, more crazy, right? If you think, you know, kumbaya, my love, if you think it's all going to get better, you know, visualize world peace. I used to love, I had a friend who has, had a shirt that says visualize world peace, and he had a pea pod, right? It's not going to get better until things get worse and Jesus comes back. Amen. And if you, you know, there's people that believe in, uh, what is it called, uh, uh, dominion theology that we're going to take over the world. But sadly, if you watch the news, we're not doing a real good job of taking over the world. Amen. So we have to know that things are going to get a little worse before they get better. But how many know it will get better when Christ comes and rules and reigns the earth again. Amen. I long for that. But here it is. First Peter 5. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares what happens to you. How many like that? Give, but you got to give. And that word in the King James, it says, cast your cares upon him. That word there, and I like, I used to be a wrestler. I know it's hard to believe, but I was a wrestler. And it means to slam them at the feet of Jesus. And not in disrespect to God, but it's saying, God, I'm not going to carry this anymore. How many know that sometimes you got to shake things off? And I don't mean like, what's your name song? But you got to shake it off because guess what? Fear wants to get on you. Stress wants to get on you. How many know what I'm saying? You can leave this place and go, yeah, God is good. And all of a sudden something pulls out in front of you. Ah! Right? And stress is there. This Emmanuel, this God of the universe, who's got all to care about all the things going on in the whole universe, cares deeply about what happens to little old you and I. How many of you like that? That just blows me away. Isn't it amazing to me? Think about this. This is free. That while we're too busy for God, a lot of times, God is never too busy for you. How, how many think that's pretty awesome? That God's wanting us all the time. I mean, he never goes, hey, how, I'm kind of busy here trying to run the universe. Have you ever gotten a busy signal? Never have I. I always say, hey, come back more. You know, I, I really like it. Isn't that amazing? If we could, you know, I, I'm going to go back because i got to be nice. But if Ronald Reagan was still alive, 
How many of you know that was a good president? I would be really blessed if Ronald said, hey, call me up whenever you want. I'd like to just chat with you. How many of you know I would call Ronald a lot? And Ronald isn't even half or even a billionth awesome as Jesus. And yet Jesus says, call me all the time, anytime, because I really like hanging out with you. That should blow you and I away. So I want to encourage you to give him all your cares tonight in this holiday season the rest of your life. Take full advantage of this great benefit of casting your cares and worries upon him because his strong shoulders can take it. That's only that this strength is only found in knowing Jesus Christ. Second, he is our prince of peace. In this world that is so stressed out, And they say that anxiety disorders and depression is a billion-dollar business, and it's growing. I forget. I heard stats, and I don't know how true this is, you know, statistics. But they say almost half of America is on some form of antidepressant. Half of America, and probably growing. How many know that that they say most of the counseling that people do is because of stress-related or guilt that they're experiencing? I believe that depression, hear this, is not completely a bad thing. Now, if you're a believer and you're stressed out, that could be a little bad. But I think, I believe that if it wasn't for me struggling with depression as a teenager, I would have never received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. How many could say amen to that? It was through discouragement. It was through frustration. It was through the emptiness of life that I actually said, what is life about? And how many know, I think in some ways that we're medicating people so much, it never, it it numbs them to where they don't realize, wait a sec, what is wrong with my life that I'm so stressed out and depressed? Now hear me, I know some of you are are you saying don't take medication? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that sometimes depression is God's way of getting a hold of us and showing us our need for a Savior. Amen? Right? If you don't have any worry. You know, my, I'll tell you this. This, is, this story, i got to be careful. I tell stories and I go too long. But hear this. My cousin Andre, my family's mafia. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe, but they are. And so my Italian mafia cousin who, you know, he's one of those guys who has a 17-foot extendo. He's a cement worker, and he will use that backhoe not just for cement, if you know what I mean. Okay? He is kind of a hyper guy and pretty intense guy. And he said that he took Prozac, and they said they overloaded him because they could tell he was kind of trouble. You know, how you doing? That they gave him so much Prozac that he said that you could have put gas on him at one time, lit him on fire of his couch, and he wouldn't have cared. And this is a guy who cares if you cut him off, you could have some trouble. But that's how extreme it can be. But I want to tell you this. I praise God that Jesus Christ, the God who is with us, is also our Prince of Peace. How many could use more peace in your life? Amen. Jesus said in John 14, 27, he says, I am leaving you with a gift. I like that. Leaving you with a gift. You know, most of us know, want to know what we're getting for Christmas. And if you were like me as a little kid, you found out. You just carefully did the, did, ever, did anyone do that? Any, any sinners out there? I would just kind of, oh, yeah. And if I, if I knew, you got to pick one gift the night before tonight, or well, the next night is Christmas, and I would know the sock. You know, you ever have the grandma who gave you socks? Throw those out, right? But you always look for the great gift, right? So anyways, we want to know a lot of times, especially when we're young, what we're getting for Christmas. So what is this gift that the Father has given us? Well, here it is, middle of verse 27 of John 14. He says, peace of mind and heart. As I said, do you need peace of mind and peace in your heart this time of year or maybe just right now? Well, I want to tell you it's only found in the person of Jesus Christ. Everything else is false. As I always jokingly say, you know, I have friends that are, my family's kind of new age. How many know you see new agers, they have a peace, but it's kind of that peace like the, the, the lights are on but nobody's home. You know what I mean? It's just kind of this like <laughs> it's weird peace. How many of you know, I, I don't want that, right? I, want, I need the lights on and someone home, right? But it's a peace. His peace is greater than anything else. Here it is, middle of verse 25. And he says, or, or 27 again, he says, The peace I give, Jesus said, isn't like the peace the world gives. Jesus' peace is greater than any alcoholic drink. It's greater than any drug. 
It's greater than any peace that we can get in another human being. How many of you know that? You get married, you think, oh, ha, 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 ha. and then you find out you're married to a porcupine. <laughs> Have you ever heard that someone said, a Christian culture says, here's what it is. You think this person's going to save you? How many know you've got sin, porcupine quills, and they got sin? Can anyone say an amen? With, is anyone's spouse not here? You can say amen, right? And you try to get close. What happens? You poke each other. And how many know life is not to think that someone's going to save you and never poke you, but here it is, that you can both lovingly in Christ dequill each other. Amen? So, but I, my point is I'm trying to make is not that you should never get married. My point is that if you think that other spouse is going to be your savior, you got another thing coming, right? I mean, it ain't going to happen. His peace lasts. And what I really like about his peace is it doesn't have a hangover. Amen? His peace doesn't have a weird aftertaste. It's real. It's true. And that's how good Jesus is. End of verse 27 of John 14. So do not, Jesus says, do not be troubled or afraid. Why? Why don't be troubled or afraid in these crazy times? Because Emmanuel is with you. But again, here it is. Here's the question for all of us. Are we with Emmanuel? Are we with Jesus? That's the question. God became one of us so that we could become one of his children. If you have not, hear this, if you have not received Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace, as your Lord and Savior, here's my question. What are you waiting for? How many know this, guys? I just want to say this. This isn't to scare you, but it's to say reality. How many know you're not guaranteed tomorrow? You're not guaranteed that you don't pull out here and some of you are going to turn, do the U-turn, that someone is going to go boom and T-bone you. You're not guaranteed that you could hear from the doctor that you have a disease or have cancer. But he says, do not be troubled. Do not be afraid. Why? Because if you're with him, then you know the Prince of Peace, and you can have peace even in the midst of the storm. Amen? Amen. God became one of us so that we could become one of his children. If you, as I said, have not received the Prince of Peace, then I say, receive him tonight. The Bible says this. It says, today or tonight is the day of salvation. Tonight. Don't put it off because, as I said, hear this. There is a time, hear this. People, I used to have a call on a radio show, and people used to always ask me. So I, I used to get this once a month, and they used to say, Craig, I think I've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And that's the unforgivable sin, right? And I said, well, how do you think you blasphemed the Holy Spirit? Oh, I got mad at God once, and I yelled at him. Hear this. If you're worried about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, how many know you didn't blaspheme the Holy Spirit? The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when the Lord's drawn you and drawn you and drawn you and you keep saying, no, tomorrow, God, not now, God. How many have ever heard that or felt that? I was. I, God was constantly drawing me. I say, not now, God, not now. I never forget how my grandpa said, he says, Craig, here it is. When you're old and worthless, that's when you give your life to God. But how many know this? As the way I was living before Christ, I was a kind of a partier. I didn't, wasn't, I didn't plan on being old. I didn't plan on being 30 years old. Now I'm 53. I didn't plan on this kind of hair. You know what I mean? But hey, it happens. This holy season, I want to encourage you to look to the baby who's in the manger. The one who became a man, a man who died on the cross, who died to pay the price for your sins and mine, who died to deal with the craziness of all the sins in our lives. But hear this, don't just let God be with you from afar. Don't just know, yeah, someday I should give my life to Jesus, but know him today. Know him today. Realize that the Bible says he who has the Son has life, but he who does not have the Son, what? Does not have life. You want to be ready, right? How many know the Lord could come back at any moment? There's nothing holding him back from coming. He could come right now, like a blinking of eye. Just boom. And I tell you, did anyone see the video when they're preaching in a church like this size and all of a sudden the rapture and there's only like two or three people left? That, you watch that video, it freaks you out. Because you just go how fast. It's just like, and he literally goes, they're just talking, he's talking, and boom, and then everyone's gone. How many know that would be a bummer 
if you were left behind. And some people say, oh, ah, that's cool because I'll know God's real. I mean, no, I love what one man of God said. If you can't live for Christ in the life situations, which is right now, how I many it would be real hard to live for Christ in the death situation when you probably have to die to stay with Christ in that tribulation? It's a good time to receive Christ now. Amen? To receive this Emmanuel, this God who is with us. Let's make sure this Christmas season that we're with him also. Because he gave his all to be with us. And hear that, guys. We should in love be with him. Give our lives to him. I love that. I always, that's why I put a cross. You know, a lot of Calvaries don't have a cross anymore. Because the cross, they think, is kind of religious. But hear that. The cross is a great symbol. Amen? Amen. To remind us that he died on the cross for you and I. And that just as he gave his all for you and I, we in love should say, God, I want to give my all to you. Whatever sin is in my life, whatever dreams I've had that maybe aren't yours, I give them to you. You can know him personally tonight. The Bible says in John 12, it says this. Hear this, I love this. To all who receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. If you will open the door of your heart tonight, Jesus will come in, and he will change your life for the better. Amen? Amen? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes, and can you turn the lights? Maybe you're here tonight, and maybe you've never really given your life to Christ. I want to encourage you, if you sense the Holy Spirit drawing, if you're here and you say, Pastor Craig, I want to leave this place knowing that I know that I know that I'm saved. I want to know the Prince of Peace, not just know about him, not just know that he's with, he, he, he's died for me, but I want to know him. I want him to be in my life. If that is you, in a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to receive Christ, to open the door of your heart and say, Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I believe there's also a second group here, probably a bigger group than the first one, that you've maybe known Jesus. You maybe were raised in a Christian home. Maybe your mom or dad brought you here, or a loved one. But hear this, you can't rest on grandma's or mom and dad's Jesus. You need to know him personally. As someone once said, Jesus has no grandchildren, amen? So if you're here tonight and maybe you're like the prodigal son, son maybe your daughter, you've had one foot in the church, and one foot in the world. And tonight God is saying, come back to me. God is just saying, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. Come back to me. If that is you and you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you to receive Christ or to recommit your life to Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity. I want to ask everyone right now, with every head bowed and every head closed, if that is you and you feel the desire to receive Christ for the first time, or you feel the Lord drawing you to recommit your life to him, to say, God, I'm not going to play games with you anymore. If that is you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want you to pray, for, pray with me. Pray, I want to pray for both groups, the first group to receive Christ and the second group to recommit. And just pray with me out loud. Will everyone pray with me out loud? The Bible says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. So just pray, even if you're... If you're strong with the Lord, just pray so no one feels left out. Would you do that? Just pray, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I confess you that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart for the first time or I recommit my life to you today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And empower me to live for you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for taking me back. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you can... Raise your head now. If you prayed that prayer to receive Christ or you prayed that prayer to recommit your life, would you tell somebody? 
For the sake of time, I'm not going to have you raise your hand in front of me, but just can you make sure you tell someone you came with or tell me if you didn't come with anyone, but just make sure you tell someone, I received Christ or I recommitted my life to Christ because it's important that people know what you did so they can encourage you and pray for you. Amen? So that you walk with God because guess what, guys? Hear this. The church of Jesus Christ needs a total makeover. It needs people that don't just believe they're saved, but people who really walk with God. That's what the world's looking for. It's not just people that say, oh yeah, I know Jesus, and then live like the world, but people who really say, you know what, I know Jesus, and because of the grace and strength of God, I want his ways to be lived out through my life. God wants that for you and I. Have a blessed and Merry Christmas. We love you, and we're going to have the children's service right now. Amen.